We have been looking for many years for a Sunday law to be enacted in our land. And now that the movement is right upon us, we ask, will our people do their duty in the matter? Can we not assist in lifting the standard and in calling to the front of those who have a regard for their religious rights and privileges? Welcome to another last day event as they are being fulfilled, indeed, very, very rapidly. We would like to apologize for the delay in bringing this message to you. We have had some difficulties with our uh, computer to bring this live to you. It took us a while, it took me a while to uh, work out the bugs, but by God's grace, we are now, now live. I hope and pray, my brothers and my sisters, that uh, you have been doing well, by God's grace. Welcome, each one of you, wherever you are joining us, even for the first time, you are welcome. Indeed, we are living in the last days, and the final events are indeed being fulfilled very, very rapidly. It's almost as if, if you blank, you miss what is taking place. We are witnessing, indeed, a rise of the papacy, like we have never seen it before. But it was prophesied that those days were going to come. And those days, indeed, are upon us. And as you well aware of, this controversy is over worship. Whom are you going to worship? And when are you going to worship? On the day that you choose to worship, whether if it's Sunday, the day of the sun, S-U-N, God, little G now, or the Sabbath day of the Lord, the seventh day of the week, it's going to show, it's going to determine on which side of this great controversy that you are going to find yourself in? Will it be the majority or will it be the minority? And my brothers and my sisters, God has given us a message for such a time as this, to help the world to understand the issues at hand, to help the world to understand what is at stake, their salvation, to help the world to know about those three messages that we find in Revelation 14, verses 6 through 12, the message that must, or messages that must accompany with the uh, main subject that we find from those passages has to do with worship, worship the beast or worship Jesus Christ. My brothers and my sisters, we are going to one more time Look at this issue, this great controversy over whom are we going to worship and it is going to be determined soon and very soon on which side of this battlefield that you are going to find yourself or I am going to find myself in. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father God which art in heaven, we want to thank you Lord for giving us the privilege to work out the bugs earlier in order to bring this video message to your people. I pray, Lord, that it would not be me that speak, that it would be you. Speak to us now, we pray, because we do want to know the way. Help us to go by a dust saith the Lord, rather than a dust saith man. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Notice carefully with me, brothers and sisters, what we read here from the Review and Herald, July 2nd, 1901, paragraph 7. God's people should draw together. Should draw what now? Together. Why? In even chords. Now the word chord in Bible prophecy, it represents love. So let's read that in that context. God's people should draw together 
in even love or cords. That means bind together. Remember what Isaiah tells us in chapter 8 of the book of Isaiah. It says, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. We have to come together. And hence the reason why the enemy has introduced <clears throat> lockdowns, social distancing, forbidding us from meeting together because there is power. When God's people come together to worship him, as Jesus says to the woman at the well, there is power when God's people come together to worship him in spirit and in truth. Acts chapter 2 is a very good reference of that. Let's continue. Let's read it in its context again. God's people should draw together in even chords or love. For in their unity lies their strength. Notice unity lies their strength coming together. They are weak when they love themselves more than Christ and their brethren. You see the word chords there and then the word love that is used there. They are being used interchangeably. Notice carefully. When they work unselfishly, each striving to help the other and to build up the work in the great harvest field, what happened? They will lead men to believe that God has indeed sent his son into the world. Come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Notice, this is the message we are to proclaim. False religions, key words, we'll come back to that. False religions must be what now? Expose. Hence, the reason why Revelation 14, or Revelation 18, I should say, Verse 4 says, come out of her, my people. And as well as Revelation 14, beginning in verse 9, all the way down to verse 11, the warning of receiving the mark of the beast, which has everything to do with worship, which has everything to do with false religion. And Lucifer then, who became Satan, was the one who started the, False religion in heaven. Let's move on. One more time. False religions must be exposed. That the truth may triumph. This is a powerful statement there. False religion must be exposed. For what reason? So that the truth may triumph. In other words, we cannot remain quiet silence. If we know the truth. And we... Are not exposing it to the world and by giving the truth to the world we are exposing darkness we are exposing false religions keep in mind as a result of false religions as a result of the children of Israel embracing false religions they perish many of them perish let's continue in this work the contest is unceasing what context false religion versus through true religion earnest and untiring efforts must be made if those who are fighting against God lay down their arms and acknowledge the truth as it is in Jesus Christ hence the battlefield there false religion must be exposed this reminds me of Revelation chapter 16 there we read about the three unclean spirits like frogs that is false religion as nebuchadnezzar set up false religion on the plain of dua in these last days we are told the papacy as it had done in time past during the dark ages will set up again false religions notice in revelation chapter 16 Revelation chapter 16, the Bible says in verse 12, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, 
and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. We see false prophets. We see the beast. We see the dragon. The dragon there primarily is Satan, but it also represents the world. Remember that. It represents the world. And out of the mouth of the beast, the beast there, that is the papacy. And out of the mouth of the false prophets, the false prophets are apostate Protestantism. They come together to create a false system of religion. And hence the reason why they will enforce Sunday. False religion always enforce their dogmas, their doctrines. That's what we had during the Dark Ages. Even today, if you try to go to some Muslim countries, you will be persecuted because of what they believe, because of their false religions. Keep in mind, one more time, the battle will be over false religions. It will be over worship, false religion versus true religion. It will be over worship, and worship has everything to do with religion. And if we were to go to, for example, in Revelation chapter 19, notice what will happen to this system of false religion. Revelation chapter 19, the Bible tells us, in verse 20, it says, And the beast was taken, and with him the huna, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that, that's what now, worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. God will annihilate, will destroy false religions. And that is the same thing that we read about in Revelation chapter 13, beginning in verse 14. A system, well, beginning in verse 13 as well, a system of false religions, false miracles. They wrought, and you continue to read, it tells us because of their system of false religion, they will enforce Sunday sacredness. That is this evil that we read about, the Bible described as the image of the beast. This battle, once again, it's about whom you are going to worship over false religion, over which day of the week, Sabbath or Sunday, that you are going to keep. Notice what this person says here. His name was Havner, Dr. Havner. He died in 1986. Notice what he says. He says, the devil is not fighting, what's the word? Religion. He's too smart for that. He is producing what now? A counterfeit Christianity. So much like the real one that good Christians are afraid to speak out against it. So the devil does not mind. Religion. That's not what he's worried about. He is producing counterfeit religion, counterfeit Christianity, keywords there, counterfeit Christianity. That is exactly what we read in Revelation chapter 16, the three unclean spirits like frog, as well as in Revelation chapter 13, beginning in verse 11, all the way down to verse 18, the same system of false religions, the world, and then the beast, the papacy, and then apostate Protestantism. And when they come together, as Peter prophecy also tells us, that the dark ages will seem like a picnic. Notice, Spirit of prophecy went on to tell us, history will be repeated, false religion will be exalted, the first day of the week, a common working day, possessing no sanctity whatever, will be set up 
as was the image of Babylon, all nations and tongues and peoples will be commended to worship this spurious Sabbath. This is Satan's plan to make of no account the day instituted by God and given to the world as a memorial of creation. Again, history, she says, will be repeated. What does she mean by that? False religion will be exalted and a day that has been substituted for the true Sabbath of the Lord, that would be Sunday, will be exalted the same way Nebuchadnezzar set up this image on the plane of Dua. And my brothers and my sisters, false religion is being exalted. Again, keep Revelation 16 in mind. The three unclean spirits like frogs will come together. The world, the beast, the papacy, and our past Protestantism to form a false system of religion. And keep in mind, it comes with censorship. It comes with penalty if you do not bow speaking of the world the beast censorship and our past protestantism coming together notice on the screen from Brett Bart Mark Zuckerberg wants churches or churchgoers to connect with God when now on Facebook Mark Zuckerberg believes the shemdemic has created a new opportunity for Facebook to grow his plan involves incentivizing churchgoers who have become familiar with virtual services over the past year due to lockdowns to what is the word permanently move their religious worship online permanently to move their religious worship online is that God's ideal for his people read Acts chapter 2 again Acts chapter 2 and onward, the disciples were forbidden from gathering, congregating together to worship God, to preach in the name of Jesus. But did they come together in spite of that? Yes, they did. Are they doing the same thing today? Now, Mark Zuckerberg is telling us that he is your God. Remember, three unclean spirits like frogs, the world. They're coming together to set up a false system of worship. And once this system of worship, which is here, is set up, what will follow? Worship. Worship the beast and his image. Receive his mark in your foreheads and in your hands. And again, we're talking about a platform that is known for censoring the truth. So... Is it really about giving Christianity a platform? It is, is it really God's ideal for people, for his people, to worship permanently online? No, it's not God's idea. Let's move on. Notice the next one here from the Associated Press, August 8th, 2021. Some praise, some doubts as Facebook rolls out a prayer tool. A prayer tool? Facebook already asked for your thoughts now it wants your prayers the social media giant has rolled out a new prayer request feature a tool embraced by some religious leaders as a cutting edge way to engage the faithful online do you understand what you are reading about here what we are reading about facebook is telling us how to worship what did Jesus one more time say to the woman at the well? How should we worship God? Who instituted worship? It is God. Read Exodus chapter 8. Beginning in the very first verse, God says, I am the one that have brought you out of the land of Egypt, slavery, bondage. And then he commanded you, Thou shalt not have any other God before me. Do not bow down to idols. And then it says, remember 
the Sabbath day old. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's the third one. And then the fourth commandment says, remember, when should we worship that God? It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And then it says, for in six days, verse 11 there, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in the midst, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. He sanctified it, set it aside as a memorial of creation, as a day of worship. We worship God every day, but there's a particular day when we are commanded by God to come together as one and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. But the world has set up a system, a false religious system. They are telling you now how to worship and not just how to worship, but when to worship, where to worship as well. So they are telling you how to worship, where to worship, when to worship. Really? They say you must worship on Sunday. That's when you must permanently worship online. That's where how to worship. Hmm? Bow to those idols. Bow to the beasts of Rome, the men of sin. Let's move on. The article goes on to say in Facebook groups, employing the future members can use it to rally prayer power for upcoming job interviews, illnesses, and other personal challenges, big and small. After they create a post, other users can be and uh, notice can be tap and I prayed button respond with a like or other reaction, leave a comment or send a direct message. Whatever happened to Christ being our mediator? Whatever happened to secret prayers? Hmm? Facebook is now monitoring your prayers. That's the trap, my brothers and my sisters. Can you imagine praying to God to bring shower so that we can expose the papacy, expose the power that be? Can you imagine praying like that? And Facebook is listening. Let's move on. We read, it goes on to say, doing the shamdemic. We've seen many faith, Facebook says, and spirituality communities using our services to connect. So we're starting to explore new tools to support them. One more time. Who's the mediator now between you and God the Father? Hmm? Who's the mediator? That's the world that FB is playing now. Notice, let's continue. Next article, we read, sending your prayers to God and who else? And FB, for some faith leaders, lawyers, and privacy experts, those realities are especially concerning given that Facebook is now inviting users to share prayer requests on the platform, a move that gives the platform what now? Access to users' most sensitive information. Facebook doesn't exist to facilitate our spiritual lives or our sense of community. It exists for what reason? To sell our information and allow corporations and political campaigns to target us in ways that are devious. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, it is a form of control. They want to control every aspect of your life, even your spirituality. Will you join this? Quote unquote, uh, Facebook send your prayers to God? Let's move on. The deeper FB gets its hands into our lives, the more we're going to regret it. This person says, that's been the pattern of the last decade. According to FB, the new prayer feature is an attempt at fostering, what's the word? Connection. 
once a prayer request has been posted, group members can choose to indicate they've prayed, react, leave a comment, or send a private message. So in other words, as I stated, as we read, FB wants to connect you with God. One more time, what happened to 1 Timothy chapter 2? Go there with me. 1 Timothy chapter 2, FB wants to connect you with God. No, my brothers and my sisters, do not fall for this. On the surface, it sounds like they are for the religious community, bringing us together. Where? Together? Physically together? No, permanently, they said, online. Is that God's ideal for his people? No, my brothers and my sisters. Notice 1 Timothy chapter 2. Notice what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I exhort, therefore, that, first of all, supplications. What's the next word? Prayers. And what else? Intercessions and giving of things be made for all men. Where? On Facebook? Mm -mm. It says, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the what now? Of the truth. God wants all men to be saved. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? Jesus again says, The hour is coming when all that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Wherever the believers are meeting together, if they are abiding in Jesus Christ and keeping His commandments, the truth is there. Then notice verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. And who is that mediator? The man of Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. There is one mediator. But FB is trying to play the role of that mediator right now. I can connect you with God. No, brothers and sisters. It is a personal relationship that can connect us with God. Notice, because the name of the game is censorship. The name of the game is to spy on you. If you say something that they are not promoting, that they do not lack, if you believe that marriage is between a man and a woman, you'll get censored, even though that is from the Bible, well, yeah, you'll get censored. Well, case in point, notice on the screen from CBN News, August 8th, 20, or 9th, 2021, Twitter suspends Eric Erickson for calling what now? Trans athlete a man. His response on basic biology, it's epic. Social media giant, Twitter, temporarily suspended popular conservative Christian radio host Eric Erickson over the weekend for posting a tweet describing a New Zealand transgender weightlifter as a what now? As a man. Do you see where this is heading? It is to control you and it goes even beyond that. It is also to monitor your behavior, what you are talking about online, and to report you to the government as FB, as the Biden administration has said recently that they are working with FB to censor what they call hate speech, misinformation. There it is on the screen. We read here from the New York Post, White House flagging posts, from where? For whom? For FB to censor over pestilence misinformation. We are in regular, the White House says, we are in regular touch with the social media platforms and those engagements typically happen through members 
of our senior staff and also members of our pestilence team. Given as Dr. Murphy conveyed, this is a big issue of misinformation, specifically on the shemdemic. We've increased disinformation, she says. We search and tracking within the Surgeon General Office. We are flagging problematic posts for FB that spread what now? Misinformation. Can you really permanently worship on FB and preach the loud cried message? Expose Babylon and its systems that we have been experiencing taking place for the past year and a half. This is one more time. The three unclean spirits like frogs, the pastors, as we read a moment ago, are on board with FB. They are pastored pastors to quote unquote connect you with God through this quote unquote mediator FB. This battle is over worship. False religion, as Sister White says, will be established, will be set up again. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy went on to tell us. Letter 11, 1894. A dust saith the Lord is the strongest testimony you can possibly present to the people. We don't want a dust saith FB telling us to worship permanently online. We ought to obey God rather than man. And as she said again, a dust say of the Lord is the strongest testimony you can possibly present to the people. So it is time to bring a dust say of the Lord to the people. It is time as it was the case on the plain of Dua, there was a dust say of Nebuchadnezzar to worship the way he dictated. And how did the three Hebrew boys handle this? They handled it by a dust saith the Lord. They brought a dust saith the Lord. The strongest testimony that we can now bring to the people. That's where we are. Hence the reason why the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 14 again, the strongest warning ever given to mortal man, if any man worship, the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead. The same shall drink of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented day and night. My brothers and my sisters, that is the issue right now. False religion has been set up as it were in the days of the three Hebrew boys. Notice Spirit of Prophecy went on to tell us Manuscript, volume 3, page 39, paragraph 2. We are every one of us to look for finite men to the omnipotent God who has the ownership of all to whom he has given life. They are under his government. And when finite rulers make what now? Laws, that does what? Conflict with a plane, thus saith the Lord. We are to do what? To obey the law of God above their laws. Shall men dare take the place of God, setting aside the laws of the ruler of the universe and placing in their stead human what now? Enactments. Shall he dare to compare, compel obedience to these human laws? Mm? Are we going to bow to this false system of religion? Notice on the screen, speaking of false system of religion, they always use false flags events as well to compel, to coerce, to force the conscience, uh, to bow. And one such false flag event is here. Notice carefully, postal workers intercept envelope containing what now? Three bullets address to Pope Francis. From the Daily News, August 9th, 2021. The piece of mail, which had no return address, but carried a French stamp, was addressed to the Pope, Vatican City, St. Peter Square in Rome. Now think about this for a moment. Why three bullets that was intercepted by mail 
addressing the Pope. We are being set up one more time because the three, remember the number three, three angel messages expose which system of worship, false system of worship, Babylon, the Pope of Rome. Why three? Was that a coincidence? They are setting things up right now to go after Seventh-day Adventists. False flags events as they did on January 6, 2021 in Washington, D.C. to go after extremists. Mm, that's what's taking place. Keep in mind, my brothers and my sisters, what brought the United States of America and the Vatican together back in the 80s. It was as a result of a false flag event, the quote-unquote assassination of both John Paul II and Ronald Reagan that brought the two powers together to go after communism. Remember this? As we read, the three unclean spirits like frogs will unite, will coerce, will force many to bow to the system of false religion. One more time, that's what we're seeing. Keep that in mind. Notice carefully with me what we read here from Spirit of Prophecy. We see before us a special work to be done. We have received the light of what now? Of the three angels' messages. And we need now to come decidedly to the front and take our position on the side of what again? Of truth. God has given us three angel messages. And it says we need to come to the front and take our position, firm position, on the side of truth. Then it goes on to say the three angels' messages are to be combined giving their threefold light to the world. In the Revelation, John says, I saw another angel come down from heaven, from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Revelation 18, 2 through 5. This represents the giving of the last and threefold message of warning to the world. Warning against whom? Warning against which system? warning against Babylon, its system of worship, because, as the Bible says, she has made all the nations drunk of the wine of a fornication, false system of worship. Now they are telling us three bullets was intercepted. That was sent to the Pope. False flag, false flag. Notice carefully, from the National Register envelope, with three bullets addressed to Pope Francis, intercepted in where? Keywords there. Milan. We'll come back to this. The piece of mail, which had not, no return address but carried a French stamp, was addressed to the Pope. Now, which location again did they say? Milan. Keep that in mind. Three. The number three. We have three angel messages. And Milan. If you... Know your history, you know exactly what happened in Milan. Think, 321 AD, the era of the black horse, the era of compromise between the church and the state. The three unclean spirits like frogs came together during that era. Notice carefully, next on the screen, Italian police. Sender of envelope with bullets addressed to Pope Francis has been identified. Mm, that quick. They found the uh, person in responsible for this, quote unquote. Listen now. The police have not released the name of the in individual but said it is a French. Mm, French. Why? Remember French Revolution? It is a French citizen already known to Vatican security with whom the Carabinieri of Milan, that's the name Milan again, will now coordinate to evaluate the meaning of the gesture and its possible danger. 
the Italian police originally revealed that the envelope contained what now? Again, three pieces of nine millimeter ammunition of the kind used in a flubber gun and a message referring to what now? Financial operations in the Vatican. A new statement revealed that the envelope also contained a copy of a what's the number? 10. Keep that number in mind as well. 10 euro deposit, but it is not known for what and under what circumstances it would have been made. Mm. So we have the number 3. And then we have the number 10. For every truth of God, Satan has a counterfeit. For every truth of God, we have three persons in the Godhead. We have three angels' messages. Then we have the number 10 now. We have 10 commandments. Keep also the word Milan in mind. Let's go now to our pioneers and to connect the dot. One more time, let me refresh your memory about what we just read there. Sender of envelope with bullets addressed to Pope Francis has been identified. Then we see the word Milan, the number 10 and the number 3 there. Now let me take you to our pioneers to connect the dot between Milan and the number 10 and the papacy. Notice carefully. We read, uh, thus in less than 11 years, from the issuing of the what kind of edict again? Where did it come from? The edict of Milan. The Catholic Church stood in full and exclusive possession of the authority of the empire, both in the rights of property and the right to worship under the profession of quote-unquote Christianity and with a specific and direct commission to use that power and authority to compel the submission of heretics. Thus was made the papacy, the beast of Revelation 13, 1 through 10, and all that ever came in its career from that day to this has been but the natural and inevitable outgrowth of the power and prerogatives which were then possessed and claimed by the Catholic Church. So what happened there? With the Edict of Milan, that led the way to the rise of the Roman power, the Roman Church power. That is Revelation 6, dealing with the third seal, the, the black horse. The Black Horse era, the era of Constantine. That's when we read about the Edict of Milan. Now everything are uh, stacking up together. Everything, my brothers and my sisters, are coming together. God, as we were told from both the Bible and spiritual prophecy, history will be repeated. False religions will be established. What happened then? As we read from Revelation 13, verse 1, this beast that comes up from this populated water area. And the dragon gave him his power and seat and great authority and fought against those who dare to stand against that beast. Question now, how many did according to Daniel chapter 7, how many did that beast uprooted in order to have full power without any opposition he uprooted three how many bullets did they mention here three how many messages that we read about in revelation 14 verses 6 through 12 three angel messages the papacy's agenda is the same as it was in time past to uproot three the three angel messages in the form of God's people mm. 
That's where we are. Another edict of Milan is coming. Notice carefully. It goes on to say, and it all came from the edict of Milan, bestowing governmental favors upon the Christians. No man can fairly deny that in the edict of Milan and the religio-political intrigue that lay behind it, church and state, image of the beast, there was contained the what now? The whole papacy. No man can successfully deny that the what again? The edict of Milan, though appearing innocent enough upon its face, contain the whole papacy or that the things that followed in the, what's the number? 10 years up to 323, which we have sketched, were anything else than the logical and inevitable development of the evil that lay wrapped up in that. All this came out of the what kind of edict again? That edict of Milan and nothing came out of that was not in it nothing could come out of it that was not in it what did we read again from the article not only they mention Milan but also remember the number 10 right there second line we see the word Milan and then the line before last we see the new statement reveals that the envelope also contain a copy of 10 euro deposit one more time how many in how many nations i should say that europe was divided into daniel chapter 7 there beginning in verse 8 there how many 10 nations and how many did the pope again uprooted three my brothers and my sisters, the Bible says, Jesus says, there will be signs everywhere. Those who are diligent students of Bible prophecies will see those things. The world and others cannot see, will not be able to see it as we see it. God has to open our eyes to see how they speak in darkness, how they do things, but we can decode it. The Edict of Milan. Do you know what else was behind the Edict of Milan? Not only to help the papacy to come into power, but notice, we read here from history and headlines, March 7, 331 or 21, how Sunday became the Christian Day of Rest. On March 7, 321, Roman Emperor, Constantine the first decreed that Dies Solis Invecte Sunday or the day of the soil or sun Invectus Roman God of the sun would be the Roman day of rest throughout the Roman Empire in 313 Constantine had removed all penalties for practicing Christianity, he was establishing a false system of religion there and restored property and rights to those previously convicted of the illegal religion. And when was that? From the Edict of Milan. So what was established from the Edict of Milan? Sunday as the new day of worship by law. Next one. Bishops. On the 1700 anniversary of Work Free Sunday, we encourage all to do what now? To respect this tradition, meaning respect Sunday. We invite everyone to build a culture of Work Free Sunday. Let it be a day of rest, strengthening, and revival of weekend family and social bonds. Let it be an opportunity for emotional calm as well as building a family religious and national community wrote the president of the polish bishops conference and so on then it says last words blue words 
in an appeal to respect what now? Sunday as a day off from work. What is coming as a result of this false flag? Three bullets were intercepted in the mail that was addressing the Pope. Another edict of Milan, Sunday sacredness by law. Next, it goes on to say, the bishops have launched an appeal to respect Sunday as a non-working day in what now? Connection with the 1700th anniversary of the decree of whom? Emperor Constantine the first, the great of March 7. Some sources indicate the date of March 3rd, which made Sunday a public holiday. It is just 1700 years. The decree, that's the edict of Milan, the decree of Emperor Constantine the Great, who on March 7th, 321, ordered that Dies Solis, the day of the sun, become a day off from work. A system of false religion was established then within Christianity. Sunday became the day to worship Constantine, as Revelation chapter 6 tells us, made open the way for the pale horse era. But first, Emperor Diocletian helps the beast, not Diocletian, Justinian, made war against three that stood against the power that be. FB is being used to make war against the three angels' messages, those that proclaim that message. Hence the reason why they want you to have permanent worship online, to monitor, to censor the message. It is not God's ideal. This is the Sunday Law movement again. Another edict of Milan. Will we bow to that system, false system of worship? Or will we stand and worship God on His Holy Sabbath day. Notice carefully what we read here from Review and Herald, December 24th, 1889. We must take a firm stand that we will not reverence the first day of the week as the Sabbath, for it is not the day that was blessed and sanctified by Jehovah. And in reverencing Sunday, we should place ourselves on the side of whom now? Satan, the great deceiver. The controversy for the Sabbath will open the subject to the people and an opportunity will be given that the claims of the genuine Sabbath may be presented. Blindness, disloyalty to God, so prevails that His law is made void. But the psalmist says of such a condition, it is time for thee, Lord, to work for they have made void thy law. It is God for us to work. It is time for us to stand fast. There was a decree in the days of Daniel, more specifically, Daniel chapter 6. What was that decree about? It was over worship. A false system of religion was established then. How did Daniel handle it? You can read the chapter for yourself. My Bible tells me that Daniel, in spite of the fact he knew about the decree, the death penalty that comes with it, not worshiping the kings for 30 days, he went up to his room as he had done many times before and he opened his windows facing Jerusalem and worshiped his God. It says Daniel continued to do this three times times a day as he had done before my brothers and my sisters it is the same system of false religion that the bible describes in revelation chapter 14 again that we are given a message three angels messages to warn the world about this system of false religion to let them know that god does not want his people, does not want you to die, does not want you to worship 
a false God that cannot see, that cannot breathe, that cannot hear, that cannot save. Babylon indeed is falling. As Spirit of Prophecy tells us one more time, we have to expose any false system of religion. We have to expose them. We read that right here. Notice the green words again. Bottom, it says, this is the message we are to proclaim. False religions must be exposed that the truth may triumph. We have to expose false systems of religion. Hang on, my brothers and my sisters. We who are striving to worship God in spirit and in truth, we are on the right side of this great battle, this great controversy that is taking place in our world at the moment. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that will continue to worship God as Revelation chapter 14 tells us, verses 1 through 5 of the 144,000. They follow the Lamb whithersoever He takes them. Let us continue to follow the Lamb. Let us continue the protests that we will worship God and Him only until He comes. This protest must continue as long as there is sin, there is a devil in our world, as long as there is the man of sin in our world. This protest must go on until the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Loving Father God which art in heaven, Thank you for the truth for the hour, for present truth for this time. Indeed, man wants our allegiance right now. They want us to worship a false system, which is the devil himself, who is being honored and worshiped. But help us to choose the narrow path, the lion's den, the fiery furnace, the wilderness experience as the Waldensians had chosen. Help us to choose a life of persecution, trials, than to worship men above our Creator, our Savior. Lord, help us to stand firm and believing that soon and very soon, you are coming indeed to deliver us from the hands of the enemy that are coming together as we read in Revelation 16, the three unclean spirits like frogs coming together to make war against God and His people. But as we also read, be thou faithful unto death and you will give us a crown of life. Forgive us, Lord, of all our sins, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.